of bombardment often goes on for hours on end. Tank rounds, missiles from helicopter gunships, rockets and mortars, as well as small arms fire. This town has been shelled repeatedly every single day for over a month. During a brief lull, we take a drive around town. Every neighborhood has been hit. These are the buildings around the only working medical facility where one doctor, who's not a general surgeon, and a couple of nurses work on a makeshift operating table covered with aluminium foil. We need to stop killing uh, people every day. We, we want to stop the uh, Assad regime, uh, kill uh, us every, every day, kill children and women and uh, everybody, and destroy uh, building uh, houses. As we leave the clinic, we're forced to take cover. The Free Syrian Army in this town are hopelessly outgunned. They have just small arms, RPGs and a handful of mortars. Despite this, remarkably, they're making progress. An assault was staged on the main headquarters of the Assad forces, the town hall. After taking control of the building, they then demolished it so it couldn't be retaken. Most of the townsfolk have fled, but others remain. They either don't have anywhere else to go or not enough money to leave. Every day it gets worse and it keeps on going. There's nothing in the market and the bombardment keeps going. Every day and every night we're shelled and bombarded. We can't sleep. We're taking cover inside the building, in a corridor inside the building. That's because there is tank fire right now, one round every minute or so. We're also listening to the radios of the Assad army. The opposition commanders are listening to them. And we know that they're adjusting their range, trying to hit where we are. The indiscriminate shelling is brutally intense. We were only in this one mid-sized town for four very uncomfortable days. But what we saw gives an indication of the scale of the onslaught and destruction being repeated in places across Syria. James Bay's Al Jazeera, Al Qasir, southern Syria.